I'm a moderator of today's discussion. I'm Apolis Gritenas, journalist from online news media 15 Minute LT. Uh, and I think it's it's a theme of great importance in Lithuania, just sometimes we forget about it, forget how important is trust as a concept of not even uh, social trust, but trust as, as a question of our security, as a question of our social welfare, financial, financial welfare. Uh, and it's a great honor to talk about this theme with a free uh, panelists in this discussion, and I would like to ask to join me on the floor, uh, Mr. Ulf Andresson. He's a political analyst at the Nordic Council of Ministers and author of analysis he will present us. Uh, Mr. Pavlas Poderskis, Chief Executive Director of Vilnius City Administration. And Ms. Diana Vilita, uh, Director of Public Procurement Office. <laughs> yes. Applauses are welcome. And before we start our discussion and compare the situation in Nordic and Baltic countries and look for similarities or differences, uh, I would like to give the floor for Mr. Andreson, uh, who will present his analysis report and explain all of us how come Nordic countries came to the situation that trust became their gold. Mr. Andreson. giving me the opportunity to come here and talk about something that's very close to my heart, actually. And also, by that, giving me the opportunity to visit Lithuania for the first time, uh, which I very much look forward to, because I've even decided I will take a day off tomorrow. And my, my wife will come down here, and we will spend a weekend uh, to be tourists and contribute to the national economy here a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Ulf Andreasson. I work as a policy analyst at the Secretariat of the Nordic Council of Ministers uh, in Copenhagen in Denmark. And I've written this report about trust. Uh, it's not research from my part. What I've done is that I've gathered research that <laughs> others have done, and I've tried to make it a little bit thought-provoking and hopefully interesting. I've been in different contexts writing reports for maybe like 12, 15 years, often from an international perspective. And I would say this is the report that probably gained most attention because I think the theme as such goes into the core of our societies. So let's start. Trust. So you can think, to start with here, how much you trust these different things. How much, on a scale 1 to 10, do you trust the government, for example? Or how much, on, on the same scale, do you trust the police or media? Those are all institutions. But you can also think about how much do you trust individuals, that person, or how much do you trust that, that person? Or how much do you trust... I should have this one. Or how much do you trust a group of individuals, like, for example, your neighbors, your colleagues, your relatives. How much do you trust them? Um, because the things that I've related to now, institutions, individuals, or groups of individuals, they represent what researchers of trust call particular trust. Trust that is connected to something that you have had some kind of relationship with, that you know something about, interacted with some kind, in one way or another. But when I've written this report, what I mean by trust is not primarily particular trust. It's something else. It's called general trust or social trust. And that is, how much do you trust a person on the street that you've never met before, that you've had no previous interaction or contact with? Is that a good person? Is that a person of high moral value? Or is that the person that you don't think you can trust? That is social trust or general trust. And that is the focus in this report. It has turned out, according to the researchers, that having high levels of social or general trust in society is important. It matters. What they have been focusing about primarily is uh, the, econo the economical aspect of it. And it refers to something that is called transaction costs. Um, transaction costs is, uh, is the costs for an agreement to be fulfilled. 
and it relates kind of to how well society is functioning, how well it's working. You can imagine a society with low, low uh, levels of general trust. In that kind of society, you need a lot of lawyers. You need an extensive legal system. Maybe you need also police officers to fulfill that agreement and make things work. Whereas in a society with high levels of trust, you don't need the same apparatus to, to, to making things work uh, the same way. And these resources, the, the lawyers and, and, and what have you, they could be put to use in other areas, maybe more productive areas. So there's a Danish researcher who claimed that if you manage to raise the level of social trust in a society by 10 percentage points, you would probably, you could expect that the annual GDP would uh, rise with 0 0.5 percentage points. Maybe we should take, take that with a grain of salt, but the point is that it probably matters. It matters more than we think. But it matters also in other situations, in, 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 in other, uh, it has other implications. Well, when you talk about the economy, it relates, as I said, to how f things work in a society. But it also relates to that if you have a, a society with high levels of trust, people are prepared to take responsibility. They're prepared to organize themselves in improving uh, the society in, in different organizations and what have you. They take responsibility in that kind of society. Uh, it also affects other things. People tend to be happier in a society with high levels of trust. People tend also to uh, feel that they are empowered, that they have control of their lives if, if they live in a society with high levels of trust. So trust is a good thing. And considering that the Nordic countries end up in top when you measure trust and the effects that you have of having a high levels of social trust. That is why the report is called uh, uh, the Nordic Gold, because it's a resource that we have in the Nordic countries that is of very high importance. Uh, if you wonder where Lithuania is in, in this context, I, I, I've, I've looked it up. It's researchers most usually refer to something called the European Social Survey. And the Nordic countries are the five top nations. Lithuania is in the middle in the European context, maybe a little bit lower than the middle, but above Spain and at par with Austria. So that is the Lithuanian situation from the, from the survey done in 2014. So the question then becomes, how is trust created in society? First of all, you could, well, most people realize it has something to do with the economy. It's easier to, to trust other people in a rich society than in a poor society. Uh, but, well, also, if you plot uh, countries sort of on trust and GDP, you see there is some kind of connection that the richer the country is, the higher it tends to score uh, on the trust levels. But the, the, the connection is not that simple. And that's why it's put in parentheses here, because as countries become richer, it's not necessarily the case that the trust level goes up. Uh, you have seen that, for example, in the US, that has become richer and richer, but the trust levels have gone down. So this is not necessarily the case that as a country become richer, that uh, uh, the levels of social trust increases. So that's why it's in parentheses. Instead, the researchers uh, they tend to focus on something else. They tend to focus on creating cohesive societies, societies that stick together, where people feel like there is one big us in this society. It's not a lot of us and them, it's one big us. We're, we're almost like a family in this society. Um, the ps psychological aspect of it is that um, if if I feel that people around me, they also take responsibility for the society. And by the way, I also share their set of beliefs, their values, their backgrounds, their way of thinking. They are more or less like me. And I know, I know for sure I'm a good person and they are like me. So they need to be good persons as well. So that is, that's the psychological aspect uh, of uh, creating cohesive societies.
There is a, a researcher that talks about radius of trust and sort of the, the, the content of that. Well, no, the, 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 the core of that is that um, the more similar we feel to another person, the more uh, the higher is the possibility that we will trust that person. So that is kind of the main mechanism. But for the researchers, the question then becomes, how do we create cohesive societies? Uh, that is the really tricky question. And, uh, well, they tend to focus on two things. First of all, uh, it refers to the state, the government, and, and main institutions in society. Two things. First thing, it relates to policy. Do they have the policies that are in place that will create these cohesive societies? What researchers most uh, focus on is that we, they should avoid, uh, the society should avoid having a permanent group of poor people, well, a group of poor people that are permanently poor, so to speak, because that creates an us and a them, and you have like two parallel societies in the same society. So that is one thing that they, they, they tend to focus on. The other thing when it comes to the state, so that is the first one here, that is, um, it's, the state is, is kind of a structure of the society. The structure that you, as an individual, interact with all the time, it determines a lot of the things that happen in your life. Maybe even kind of your life outcome, your life chances is determined by the interaction that you have with the state. And it is of extreme importance that the state treats you in a way that you perceive it, it being fair, just and efficient. What you definitely don't want is people to feel that the state is uh, corrupt, uh, because then the structure of society as such is rotten to its bone. And why is that important? Because that means that we don't have the same uh, life chances. People will have different chances to succeed in life. For example, my neighbor could bribe uh, so that his or her children go to a better school than my children. And I feel that, first of all, I feel sort of disgusted what they do. And I feel that we're not in this together. You know, we should have the same, we should sort of be in the same radius of trust. We're not in this together. And this is so unfair. I have to be in this race for myself. Well, it's sort of, it's, it's one, how do you say it? It's, uh, well, it, it's a race for, 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 for us. And it's not a, a joint race, it's, it's an individual race. So it's very important that, that, that's, that the state treats people in a way that so they are perceived as just fair and efficient. And we absolutely don't want corruption because then society is rotten to its bone and people feel that we can't trust each other. So that is the role of the state, sort of, that is the top-down perspective. Then you have the more bottom-up perspective, the role of civil society. And it's all the experience that we have on a daily basis in our neighborhoods, in job, in, in our workplaces, and so on and so forth. How we interact with other people. Do we feel that we interact in a way that we take responsibility for things? Do we feel there is a, a sort of a glue that makes us uh, go, get together, come together in one big family in society. And you can also think about the special role of organizations, organizations on, on maybe on a local level that try to, to spur uh, cultural events or, or, or help the kids uh, with their uh, sports education or maybe help have social programs. These are things that are very efficient to create that kind of glue that we feel we take responsibility and we are in this race together. So that is the mechanism. And my point here is that these two, the state and the civil society, they both sort of are connected to, to creating cohesive societies. I would like to make two uh, important points here. First of all, these two, these two uh, bullets here, you remember in the beginning, I talked about particular trusts. I talked about institutions and I talked about people. You see them here as well. 
So one could say, well, researchers do say uh, that the sum of all the particular trusts, all the trust that you have in government, in, all, in other people as well, uh, that forms together the level of general trust in a society. So that is the first point, the sum of all particular trusts, the trust in, in these institutions and particularly the state and the trust in individuals form together the level of general trust. The second point I would like to make is, and that goes back to why does the Nordic country score so high? First of all, we have had cohesive society and we built, I would like to point, especially point on one thing, we built a welfare state that's been very much focused on avoiding having a permanent underclass, a permanent group of poor people. So that is one important thing. We, we've lifted people, the poor people up. So, so, so there should be no groups of uh, individuals that are sort of permanently outside the system. Um, so that is one important aspect. The other important aspect is that, and that relates to the, the second point here about uh, corruption and so on. When you look, about, when you look upon indexes, how people uh, perceive uh, corruption in their society, the Nordic countries always end up in top when it comes to anti-corruption. So that is of extreme importance. The third thing, the role of civil society. There are, there's, there are no countries in the world that are so much organized as the Nordic countries. Everybody's involved in singing in a choir or dancing or in a sports activity or neighborhood organizations. And the role of these organizations historically have been even more important than they are today, perhaps. So I would say that is sort of the, the perfect storm of why the Nordic countries uh, end up so high in these uh, trust uh, indexes, in top, actually. Challenges. Trust cannot be taken for, give, for, for given. It can go down, it can go up. Uh, there are some challenges People, well, there is some focus. We've had some scandals, and uh, people, some people feel that uh, the level of corruption is increasing in the Nordic countries. Um, maybe not changing that much, but I've, I will get back to that. It's of extreme importance that, that the, the government tackles these issues at once and try to sort of get rid of the corruption. But I will get back to that. The thing that the researchers are focusing, focusing on, and it, it's a very sensitive issue actually, it's about our societies in the Nordics becoming more heterogeneous. And it refers primarily to, to the migration issues. You remember the radius of trust. Suddenly there are people in the society that, that sort of have different background, different values, or actually perceived as having different values and different background and so on. And we, the radius of trust sort of they gets, they get further away and we don't feel that there's a risk of people not feeling that we, we share the same background, the same thoughts, the same values and so on. But it's not only the migration issues, it's also other issues. We are becoming more uh, divided when it comes to economic situation. There are, the rich are becoming richer, the poor are becoming poorer. It's also politically, we used to be sort of centered in the middle, now it's more, more divided uh, political as well. And these are very sensitive issues. Um, the thing that I would like to point out is that what happens in a society when trusts, trust goes down? What, what will be the consequences? On a theoretical level, what happens is that you move, as an individual, you move away from being a citizen that takes responsibility to becoming what the researchers call a free rider. You don't take part in society in the same way. You don't interact with it. You, you don't try to push it forward and help it become better. You don't, don't take responsibility. What does that mean? Well, on, on something that's very important, but perhaps not that important, is that you start not separating your garbage, you put uh, the paper in, in, in the same bin as you put uh, household waste or something like that. Well, because you think maybe the, you know, the government, they, they will just burn it in one pile. So why, why should I do this? And the neighbors don't do it anyway. So, so that's maybe a first step. Then you start to think about something like taxes. And you, you hear these things about people not paying so much as high taxes as you do. 
and you think, why should I pay some, so high, such high taxes? I should try to get avoid with, with lower taxes, maybe put something aside and don't contribute to, to, to uh, our societies in the same way. And by the way, even if I do pay taxes, you know, the government, they, they will just put it in their own pockets. Why should I give it to them? And even if they don't do that, they will give it to the poor people over there and they're just lazy and they don't, they don't want to work. You know, it's a sliding, it's, it's downhill from there. Then things perhaps comes up as, as uh, legislation. How should I, how should I uh, refer myself to legislation if, if I think that other people don't follow it? Why should I do it? So that's, the, that's what will happen with, with when trust levels would go down. So in the long run, well, in the medium run uh, perspective, we would lose what we have gained. We will have less respons the responsible citizens. We probably have increased crime rates. We will have things like lower GDP. We will have less happier people and people that feel they are less uh, in control of their lives. So final, final uh, picture here. And this is sort of the policy or political aspect of it. What I've done, I have a background in academia. So I've done here what all people, what researchers really like to do, because researchers, when, when they write policy recommendations, they write it between the lines and, and they sort of don't do it openly. I've just read what they are writing between the lines and I put them openly uh, on display here. Um, we could recognize the first one relates to corruption. We talked about that. General welfare state, not create, having a, a permanent group of poor people. Support organization, that is, uh, the bottom-up is sort of giving vitamin injections to, to local society and organizations. And the last also refers to, to the same as that one. You don't want a permanent group of poor people in society. Two comments, two final comments. First thing, I mentioned what it will mean, what will, what will be the effect of trust levels going down in the Nordic countries. Uh, I would say in the long run, the Nordic countries can't exist in, with, with the same societal model as we have today if trust levels goes, goes down. Trust is the lubricant in the machinery in the Nordic societies. If people don't accept paying high taxes, we will, in the end, we will end up having very different societies compared to what we have today. I will give you a quote just, just, to, just to show you what I mean. And it's, it's a quote from a person you didn't expect. It's quotes from the Russian revolutionary Lenin. He said, trust is good, control is better. The point is, this Nordic society is not built on control. Our society is built on trust. So if trust levels go, goes down, we would have probably very <clears throat> different societies in the long run. Um, and the really problematic part with that is that it's quite easy to lose trust social trust in a society. It takes a couple of scandals and, and that will probably influence uh, trust levels. And it's very hard to rebuild it. It takes a long time to rebuild trust levels if, we, if you lose it. So that is like the bad news, my first comment. I will finish with, with some good news. And that is, uh, um, it's like this. I talked about the really sensitive issues that, that, that we are approaching here with our countries becoming more heterogeneous uh, and the, 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 the migration issue. That is not new to our countries. That's been happening for 45, 50 years, something. And you could see, and that is true, the researchers have, 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 have found some evidence that sort of in, in, in the civil society on, on a local level, trust levels have gone down. But on an aggregate level, on national level, the trust levels have increased uh, to go up. So on national levels, even though we have become more multicultural and we have had these challenges to trust, trust levels have actually gone up in the, la in the, in the, f in the last 40, 50 years. So that is the good news. And what is the reason to that? I would say one thing, and this is, uh, well, it's not just me, some researchers point out that too, and I, I, would, I, would, uh, I would like to back them up on this. It's the first thing. We managed to keep our state uh, non-corrupt. Maybe we've even become better in the last 40, 50 years with, with fighting corruption. So the good news is that as long as the state functions as it should, 
there is very good chance that we will still be able to keep the trust levels in our societies, even though it's challenged from the bottom-up perspective. My final quote is from a, a favorite of mine. It's a Swedish researcher called Bo Rothstein, who has written about exactly these things. He's written about trust and the role of the state. And he, he says like this, he says that when a fish rottens, it's the head that will rotten first. Okay, so that was it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, spirit of social trust high, I will invite you to ask questions, raise your hands, present yourself and ask at any time if you have any question. Uh, I think I will start from you, Mr. Anderson, to, to just keep you on your toes, to keep you warm after, after this presentation. Uh, as Helen already said, uh, Lithuanians are really optimistic about the cooperation between Baltic and Nordic countries. 75% of them are in favor for this uh, idea and its development. Uh, and you presented uh, the thing, I think, that it's quite, it, it's, it's not a technological progress, it's not a financial question, uh, it's not a question where we could just point out fingers to our kind of history and say, okay, uh, we have a gap, but we have to just kind of uh, keep up working and we'll somehow uh, get to the Scandinavian uh, level. Uh, it's a trust, it's kind of individual at the same time and social uh, mean. Uh, so. At the same time, uh, Lithuania, have a, Lithuania, all Baltic countries have a Soviet history, have a history of living in a uh, totalitarian regime. Uh, if you thought about Baltic states from the, in your analysis, or even if they were at some point in the, on the remarks of your analysis, uh, have you took into account the idea that uh, you might analyze country who had a past in totalitarian regime who has a kind of scarred society. And in this sense, how adoptable is your uh, idea, uh, your thesis of Baltic gold to Baltic states? It's a very good question. I would say like this, you're perfectly right. We don't share the same history. And in this context, that means, the problem means, at least in my mind, that we had the opportunity to start earlier compared to you. You have to realize that the Nordic societies haven't always had high levels of social trust. It, they have been low historically as well. But it's taken time to, to, to raise the levels. And um, um, I mean, you have the same opportunities as, as sort of we had once. You had just had the misfortune of starting at a later point. But you, you, you if sort of the, I can't, it would be very presumptuous of me to have any uh, points on how Lithuanian do their politics, but I mean, the recipe, I would guess, is, is basically the same. Fight corruption, avoid having people that are permanently poor, and help spur local organizations. It's the same recipe for the Nordic countries as for the Baltic states. Okay. Uh, Paulus, you are representative of municipality, I think, in a Vilnius, Vilnius city uh, area. Uh, as we see from Mr. Anderson's uh, analysis, social trust and political level starts from the grass, grassroots movements, from f f right from the bottom. You already had a question. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. My name is Davila Shakaliana. I'm a member of parliament and I was also a long-term NGO um, worker. So actually, I would like to add to what uh, Paulus already said about uh, our totalitarian past, but there is also one more social element that I think should be included into this formula. It's levels of abuse. And I think that Nordic countries also evolved very strongly on their trust levels after they stopped, after they actually reformed their child rights protection and addressed gender-based violence much better. In my opinion, this is something that we can't ignore because, as you say, social trust is formed uh, from individual trust. A lot of individual trusts builds the general, the social trust. Trust 
in our individual psychological perception is built based on our experiences, on our subjective experience. And if child experiences a lot of violence, if child sees how his, for example, father beats his mother, of course, the levels of trust cannot be the same because he forms unsafe worldview. So I would really add to that formula. And in your opinion, how does this integrate? I mean, um, levels of child abuse and gender-based violence. Okay, so just before finishing my question, I'll just let you to answer. Um, what you say make perfect se makes perfect sense. Uh, uh, the thing is that I, I haven't done my own research. I have collected what other researchers have written, and I haven't found anything about what you're uh, saying. But from a logical point of view, it makes perfect sense. So, yeah, that, that would be my answer. So, so yeah, getting. I, I, I think we'll get back on human rights issues and social responsibility and so on. So getting back to the question of political activity and civic participation, maybe. Uh, Paulus, what's your experience in working in Vilnius City Administration? How, um, how reactive is society towards any, I don't know, new attempts, new projects? How, how positive do we deal with your suggestions, for example? Have you got any reactions? Well, I think, uh, first of all, uh, what we lack as, 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 uh, as a society is uh, giving other people the benefit of the doubt. Uh, we tend to treat people in a more hostile fashion than, for example, the Estonians do. They have much more of that uh, uh, in, 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 in comparing with us. They uh, let you try out before they start criticizing you. Um, it's, it's a bit different here. Uh, in the municipality, uh, we have, uh, the situation is that uh, there have been years of uh, pretty hostile, aggressive, and authoritarian rule and, and management. Uh, we are trying to change that by, uh, you know, trying to trust people more, uh, because when you uh, trust them, you enable them, and they either deliver results or fail. And uh, when they fail, you can act accordingly, but uh, or, or fix them or, or whatever. But uh, if you uh, start from controlling them and uh, pressing on them, you don't get results unless you ask them. Uh, so, so it uh, basically is uh, um, a, set, a mindset or a mm, psychological type of uh, um, thinking that, that uh, you should, uh, uh, either you are in a hostile environment and you try to control everything and you uh, are feeling afraid uh, about the surroundings or you are comfortable in that environment. And I think that that sort of relates to what uh, uh, Davila mentioned earlier because uh, uh, I think uh, a lot of people uh, in Lithuania, the, uh, those who grew up in, in a hostile environment, uh, that of our streets, of our schools, of our uh, systems that, that uh, uh, shaped those uh, human beings, they transferred that into cultures uh, later on, into companies they work in, into organizations they work in, and they project that out. But you've uh, mentioned Estonia as a different state with state with different conditions, why do you think this difference? Uh, this, this is uh, from, like, let's say, empirical <laughs> okay. uh, uh, studies and, and observations. But uh, uh, I think what they did differently is, is, is what they did differently after their um, independence, the, the full illustration of, of, of uh, the apparatus of, of the government and uh, much more uh, intense uh, um, input into their education system and uh, much more I could say tribalism they uh, this is Estonians they uh, vouch for its Estonians and that reflects in their communication they even portray uh, some things that we see uh, as our failings and we punish our, ourselves for for having those those attributes but they portray them as their own cultural pride and um, originality. 
So, so we have uh, constructive positivity, if we could put it in this. Okay, Mr. Anderson, you would like to remark something? Uh, yeah, just add one thing to, to back up what my colleague here in the panel is saying. I realized I actually forgot to mention one word. I talked about it's very important that the state or the government is fair, just, and efficient. And I forgot one word, it's, uh, that is transparent. And that is exactly what you're talking about. So that should be in there as well. Uh, I just forgot to mention it. Mm. Uh, Ms. Vilita, one of the points in Mr. Anderson's presentation was corruption and your work as a director of uh, public procurement office. So, so you're kind of expert in the field of corruption uh, on a positive side, of course. <laughs> uh, do you think Lithuania is successfully transforming from self-contained closed society towards open society as we all wish it would be and as Mr. Anderson represented us, Nordic countries are becoming more and more open despite all the challenges. So how open we are? I don't know. <laughs> in comparison with the data which provide in the, in the middle, yeah, you know. Um, we are on, on the way, we are on the road, and we are... Uh, yesterday we talked to, to Povelas, and he says, okay, maybe we have to find out our own way to, to find, not, not Sweden, not Nordic, not, not Poland, but our own way, Lithuanian way of, of trust. Um, People like stories. I would like to tell the story. It happens probably um, seven years ago. I like very much to pick up mushrooms. And uh, uh, I also have a, a friend, he, he lives in, in Britain, he also likes to, 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 to pick up mushrooms. And one day I, get, I, I got a call from London, says, look, I got a very cheap ticket. I, I, I come in nice September, probably in, in Lithuania there are mushrooms. And he, and he come and um, um, Sunday, uh, uh, Sunday morning, we go to, we went to, uh, to uh, Pine, um, forest near Druskininke. I don't know if you know where this place, but... And... Um, uh, by accident, we, we leave the key in the car, and I close the car, and the key in the, in the car. The locked, I locked the key in the car. And uh, uh, I, I just have the phone and nothing. It, it was around, you know, 100 kilometers from, from, from Vilnius. And um, uh, what to do, you know, to invite services, it's, it's expensive. Then I decided to uh, um, stop the car, to, to, to get the car on the way, and to, to return to Vilnius, take the, the extra uh, key and return back. It's, I start to stop uh, the car on the way, and um, because my... Um, Dress code was not, you know, <laughs> it was to, to balance to, to for, for picking mushrooms, but not, not for, <laughs> and um, nobody stops. Finally, I get, I get the, I get the uh, bus, mini bus, and the bus was um, eight people eight people, and then first of all, I ask a driver, look, can you, can you help me? Expli I, I try to shortly explain the situation, what happens, you know, the, I lock the key, I don't have the money, I just have, believe me, no, no identification. You know, he looks at me and says, look, get out. <laughs> you know, I, I understand that, okay, of course, I can call to friends and their friends come, but you know, it's, it's complicated. And, um, and one woman in this minibus look at me and says, okay, leave, I give you, it's around 20 liters, around, I, I don't remember exactly, but it's around five, six uh, euros. And I, you know, uh, okay, I successfully reach Vilnius, uh, take, take the key from the car and return back and so on and so on. But it was, it was you know, a um, social experiment in Lithuania, how people trust. It was one woman, 
from the age. It's, I don't know how, how the situation uh, changed right now, right today. But um, and. Uh, Next day, when I, 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 I find her and I met and I return and b bring flowers, she says, I didn't trust. I didn't trust that you come back and um, return, return this money. Uh, it's um, okay, this story. Uh, but um, to answer to your question, uh, I don't, uh, you know. Uh, Nobody, nobody didn't know how long it takes from close society, uh, transformation, you know, tra trans transition period to the open society, to trust, to, to tolerance, to all values of democratic, uh, democratic uh, society. Nobody knows, because nobody knows uh, uh, what happens with Germany when they become a, 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 a joint state. Unified. And nobody knows uh, what happens with uh, Korea if one day he become a, a one uh, state. Uh, and we know everybody, uh, Robert Putman and his, uh, and his um, um, study and, and his work about this South and North Italy about the differences between two two societies when the from the when you trust only in the family and your your friends you become trust your neighbors your community your NGOs and become a modern a modern uh, and trust society and uh, you know during this uh, 27 years of our independence we achieved a lot, really. We we must be more proud, like Estonia now. We <laughs> we should do. But um, uh, I don't want to to talk about the procurements and corruption in the procurement. <laughs> uh, we have we have there a lot of problems, and as all countries have, maybe both the countries has us much more than Nordic. Uh, but. Um, but of course, the trust level becomes in the in the bottom level when you trust the horizontal, not here uh, vertical, uh, vertical, but the horizontal networks when you trust as much as you can. Then. It's mm. uh, Diana's story actually of picking mushrooms actually brought me to, to the question that I already mentioned for you, Mr. Anderson, be before the discussion. Uh, don't you think that there is some kind of vicious circle be between all the things that you mentioned, that, that openness, uh, transparency needs uh, social trust? And at the same time, if you want to create the higher level of social trust, you need openness and transparency. So how do you break this wishy circle, how do you uh, raise the levels uh, from the outside? Um, I'm not really sure if I understand the outside perspective, but you're completely... Uh, meaning people being in a, in a, in a circle ah. where, where we're not trusting each other, like Diana, yeah. for example, told, told. But still, she, she broke that circle. She, 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 she got to her car. So uh, is it just individual process or is it somehow socially manageable? I think it's definitely manageable. I mean, I, I think I, I pointed at what the researchers, their, their recipe for, for this, and, and uh, that is definitely manageable. It takes a lot of long time. There are no quick fixes in this. It takes a, a, a really long time, I'm sure. But uh, one thing is that you're completely right. If you do manage to create it as we have uh, managed in the Nordic countries, there, there are positive circles where the the, the impact of uh, social trust itself creates social trust. And you can have also bad circles. If you lose trust, the effect of, of losing trust will also then further decrease the level of social trust. So it is a question, you're completely right, it is a question of creating these positive circles. But it's not a quick fix. I have very short, a little bit similar story just to, in contrast to what you're saying. Uh, we moved to Copenhagen four years ago, and, and, and we bought a house somewhere. And just one morning, it knocked on the door before 7 o'clock. I was still sleeping, but my wife, she started earlier, so she was up. And outside stood a man 
she'd never seen before. And we, we had just moved into the neighborhood. We didn't know anyone. And he said he lived somewhere around uh, there. And his wife had fallen in the kitchen. And um, uh, she needed to get to the hospital. So, so he wondered if my wife could borrow him money for him to take a taxi to the hospital. And she never met the man before. A little bit similar like your situation. And my wife had 100 Danish crowns, 15 euros roughly. And she gave it to him. And he, he said, I will be back this afternoon to pay, to, to, to pay it back. Uh, so, so she was sort of confronted really with the social trust level. The person she never met before, would she trust that person? And she did. So it's a very nice story about tr uh, trust in the Nordic countries. And it would be even nicer if you had returned, <laughs> which you didn't. So you can see, I mean, it, it's not for granted that, that trust is um, fulfilled in the Nordic countries. So my point here is, it's the perception of other people's value, uh, morals, values. It's not actually what, the, what they will uh, do, but how I, in, uh, how I think they will act. So it's the perception that matters, not the outcome in, in the short perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, as you were one of the, okay, we have a question. Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Matti. I'm, I'm with the European Bank here in Vilnius, have been 17 years. And one thing that sort of really I'm worried about is, is the role of media, not in Lithuania particularly, but generally speaking, and freedom of speech and all these issues that you mentioned. And the way it's developing now, it's to do with technology as well. We talk about social media. I'd like to call it a social media because it's got very little to do with being social. Uh, and what that leads to is that people live in bubbles. And, and that's when you very quickly arrive at this society where you have lots of different kinds of bubbles and people don't talk to each other, they have their own agendas and it becomes more and more aggressive. And we've seen this certainly in my country, in Finland, we've seen this uh, more and more, I'm sure it's the same in Sweden, Denmark and, and Norway as well. Uh, and it's slightly related to, to immigration, but it's not only that, it's also, uh, 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 I don't know, perhaps you have an answer to this. Uh, that's something I'm really worried about. Perhaps a journalist has something to add. I thought so, <laughs> I, I thought so that that would be a question for me, but m maybe please any of you would like to answer and then I will put my points here. I, 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 could, I could start. I, I, I perfectly agree with you. The reason why it's not in the report, because I think that kind of issue didn't really exist when I started to write the report. So the researchers, it takes a little time for them to get into these new issues. But I completely agree with you. I think that is something we need to worry about a lot because it creates these bubbles. It creates uh, sort of a political division with we and them. And I, in the old days, in, in the Nordic countries, we, we think that, well, maybe I'm on this side. But I can understand how people on this side think that is broken now. And we, we can't relate. We think they are completely different people. So I'm really, really worried about the, the things that you mentioned. And why it should be in the report, but there, I didn't find any research about it that I could relate to. Paul, anything on media and social, as social media? <laughs> I think uh, this. Uh, Social media, uh, it, uh, it only adds volatility to the process. It, not, it doesn't change uh, the uh, process itself. It only gets you to uh, um, decisions faster. And the bubble part is really troubling because uh, um, due to people only reading social media, they, they are not reading uh, a newspaper where they read it front to back uh, and get like all kinds of information. Some they care about, some they care about less. But they are like much more informed. Uh, they, they, they get some specific type of information. But this all uh, uh, relays then on education overall. Like we cannot uh, uh, expect to have uh, adequate responses to uh, 
media, media stream and the news uh, if we don't have a properly educated society. That's a, a cliche thing to say, I think, because uh, um, of course educated people tend to fact check more and they tend to think about more about what they read and how they read it. They tend to read books and, 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 and such. Uh, yet uh, something I'd like to uh, add more is uh, that um, uh, we, we cannot like blame it all on, on, on this uh, the, that that the world is somehow changing. It also brings a lot of good benefits to us. We can uh, communicate uh, uh, a lot more. We can reveal reveal some uh, secrets that uh, bad people wanted to be hidden. We can uh, make more impact. We can uh, a lot of scandals uh, that that uh, have happened in the past. Uh, few years in Lithuania, they were somehow involved with social media uh, revealing something, like political scandal. Not even in Lithuania, in the world context, yeah, of course. Uh, Panama Papers uh, and, and so th on. That's, that's uh, another yeah. thing. Uh, we uh, tend to attribute uh, that, uh, you know, corruption, bad things, or, or, or uh, any general things happen and are exclusive for <laughs> one country or another. I mean, you ask about uh, corruption, like, uh, you know, we have some huge, uh, I mean, we do have corruption, but uh, uh, corrupt construction project, it's not a groundbreaking world news. I mean, <laughs> it happens. It happens a lot and it happens everywhere. Uh, there are methods to mitigate that and uh, we are not uh, exempt from like applying them. And, you know, Transparency International is in all of the countries around the world. They deal with the same stuff that happens everywhere. That's why we call them international. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Diana, maybe you have a great opportunity to say something, something harsh on media and you, you, you must use it. I won't mind. <laughs> so, uh, about media's role in, in uh, I don't know, fighting corruption and uh, giving up more social trust? Um, of course, the media role is, is tremen tremendous. Um, do, you ha do we have investigation journalism, in, in, in investigation media in our country? Uh, first steps uh, for 15 minutes, but just first steps. Thank just, you for just mentioning. Beginning. Honorable mention. <laughs> just, just beginning. Uh, and um, yeah, it's it's a huge problem for for our country. And and you know, it's it's a very very funny s situation because everybody you know, educated people understand what's what's going on. And uh, they know they know media, they know they know names and and so on. What can trust or the article, uh, normal article, or just from from one side. At the same time, um, level of uh, uh, of how much society trusts uh, media is still very very high. It's 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 strange. We don't have it's em actually we have empty media because <laughs> we don't have uh, serious uh, articles. But we 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 trust media. It's it's f f somehow very st very strange very strange situation, and and media still play very significant role. Uh, a lot of uh, corruption scandals in in Lithuania. What this was open, it was um, it, it's also it's great. Um, at the same time, maybe. Um, from from one hand, you know, it's like you know when you are you, you have the you know you you know you like open your your boxes your black box and you try to clean your your room and you you just believe that something is going better and better each day, but at the same time you know the the society the people didn't trust anybody because you know the scandals in the media it was and um, yeah but but media still huge problem in Lithuania. Okay, for, from the media side, from the from the side of a huge problem, just before giving giving floor to Algevis uh I, I would like to answer it as a media person. Uh, I think, yes, you, 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 are, you, you, you rightly mentioned that there is a problem in merging uh, social media and 
and and and and and, and uh, media itself, uh, just because there's vast of links, interests uh, that people in the media doesn't know how uh, doesn't know how to cope with them, doesn't know how to uh, save their uh, authority, how to stay uh, objective. Uh, there are lots of challenges that you have to face, uh, and I think it, it, it never have been such a time where every day uh, working in a, in a news portal, newspaper, and so on, uh, you have to to have to do some moral, uh, I don't know, to ask, answer yourself some moral questions. You have to uh, ask yourself, should we do it, shouldn't we do it, how should we do it, how much time should we spend on this topic, and so on. So, so, so it's really challenging, it's really hard, and I think as, as an ev every level of this 20th century society, media is also facing uh, the problems without knowing how to solve them, and we have to solve them just right on the field. And it's, yes, of course it's challenging, but I think Western societies are coping with that uh, in the best manner, and let's hope that it, it, it should stay the same. Uh, yes, Algirdas Davidovich. Algis, hi, Ulf, hi, uh, folks. I'm from Vilnius uh, Police Analysis Institute. My name is Algis Davidovich, and uh, I have two questions. Uh, one, uh, Ulf, is uh, direct, directly at you. Thank you for inspiring uh, presentation. But uh, would you think that Scandinavian societies are ready? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what those uh, uh, surveys really. Uh, show that they hadn't cited, uh, quoted. Uh, do they are ready to some extent, to understandable extent, uh, accept us, uh, Eastern, poorer uh, neighbors, as um, uh, bigger us, as part of bigger Baltic Sea community? Uh, speaking of maybe uh, international trust, uh, inter-society trust, because uh, the things you described are mostly national state based, you know, inside of national states. And to my Lithuanian colleagues, I have a question. Uh, a lot of uh, psychological uh, theories of uh, trust, generalized trust, emphasize a special capability of, of uh, persons, that means tolerate each other's faults, tolerate each other's failings, tolerate each other's inefficiencies and mistakes, failure uh, tolerance, mistake uh, tolerance. Uh, in your view, uh, how far or how fast we could achieve a greater levels of each other uh, imperfection tolerance in this society uh, when we have that, uh, that society that is very much punishment and shaming based organizationally. Yeah. So maybe Mr. Anderson, let's start from you and then Paul uh, Yes, thank you for a very good question and a very tricky one. Uh, I would say that everybody uh, that I've met in the Nordic countries are in favor of increased cooperation, but where is the limit? I mean, c can you be one of the Nordic uh, countries? I, I, I uh, that's, that's a very political sensitive issue as well. I, 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 I'm just an anal analyst. I don't, <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm not a decision maker. But it's, it's a valid question and I know it's been being discussed. Um, I would say, I would, this is just my, my own perception of things, that <coughs> the Baltic states are regarded as more Nordic now than they were regarded 10 years ago. That I think for sure. But how Nordic you are, that is uh, definitely a political question. Yes. And uh, if, if I could add, uh, how common is perception of the term Nordic in Nordic countries and in Baltic countries? When we say Nordic, do we mean the same? I mean, uh, if you say that you percept us as more Nordic as it was, what it means more Nordic? Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, what, what what, what defines being Nordic? Yeah. We had a similar survey as Helen was referring to in, in the, in uh, half a year ago. We asked people, 3,000 people around the Nordic countries, what they thought about the cooperation and the identity of being Nordic. And I would say like this, traditionally, being Nordic has been based on language and it has been based on culture. Uh, but we've had a feeling that it's not really actually the case anymore. 
it has changed. And that was verified in this uh, uh, survey that we did. These days, it's actually uh, having the same societal model and having the same values that defines us as being Nordic. So in that sense, I would guess that if I'm right, that the Baltic states are perceived as more Nordic now than 10 years ago, that is probably that you've moved uh, in that direction uh, to some degree. That is probably the case, I would guess. Okay, the question of our tolerance for mistakes and failures. I would like to get one step back to the media part, just one remark. I think uh, I can, I've been discussing a lot with, uh, and, and uh, talking a lot with, with journalists. I can uh, quite uh, honestly say that Lithuanian media is completely useless if uh, uh, something takes more than a week's work un until you get at least the primary result. Uh, uh, I, I would like to argue it's not the media. I think it's editorial board who is completely use useless of having lack of patience for journalists to work more than a week on the project. So yeah, but so uh, you should blame editors, not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wh whichever. Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, as for the tolerance of, of mistakes, um, I would like to uh, l let's say everyone is corrupt and we don't trust anyone. So we can uh, get into that trench and it's fine, we can start to fight that war. But um, you need to achieve something. Uh, maybe you don't want to, but that's, that's, that shouldn't be the case. It, generally, people want to achieve things in, in life. Uh, then you need to uh, cooperate with people because uh, that's how you achieve things. You cannot do anything pretty much alone. And uh, say you're in that environment where you don't trust anyone. So you need to get uh, uh, to do things and you need uh, partners to, to do that. You need to give your first benefit of the doubt to the person uh, and uh, let him uh, go with you and try him out. Like if he deceives you, uh, well, you can get back to the trench and fight your war. But uh, usually, it, uh, in my experience, when you show trust, you get it back. And that's uh, more or less uh, eight times out of ten uh, the rule. Uh, Unless you're working in Lithuanian construction sector, that's that's not the case. <laughs> At least construction sector is worse than journalists. Okay, <laughs> Diana, Diana uh, about our tolerance for mistakes, how tolerant we we are becoming. Yeah, I, I see. Okay. Um, One last question, by the way, before final remarks. Yeah. It also, you know, it's 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 very strange feeling because I trust Povelas as a person, <laughs> but I don't trust <laughs> how the Vilnius municipality um, buying construction work. <laughs> you know, it's um, still the question is open <laughs> for, 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 for the future. But um, yeah. We uh, and, you not, and you do not trust how we are investigating the buyings of this <laughs> municipality. Okay, uh, I see two questions. Okay, two questions and one in the left. Yes, please. Hello, my name is Rutasha Traveite and I'm working in Lithuania IT Association in Fobalt. So my question is related to my background. I would like to ask you, what do you think? Could digitalization of public services increase the trust within a society? And I would like to hear, hear two perspectives. Nordic perspective, maybe you could share some best practices. And Lithuanian perspective, what like public sector representatives think about e-government and relationship to trust? Okay, Paul, as a master of open data, would yeah. answer the Baltic side and Mr. Anderson from Nordic side. Uh, as I heard in Nordic Council, dig digitalization is one of the main things, one of the main obstacles for Nordic countries. So is it helpful? Um, this is not my area of expertise, so my answer will perhaps be a bit vague. I, I, I know the question you refer to are being discussed, and for that very reason, we formed last year 
a new sector focusing on digitalization. And I think, don't think that has happened in, in many years. And I think sort of the, the baseline of it, what it will work with is exactly the things that you point out. Um, we, so, so that is uh, a f like a formal ministerial meetings that we will have regarding these issues. And Helen says it includes also the Baltic states. So this is not my area, as we hear, not my area of expertise. But uh, you, you're completely right with your analysis there, and uh, we, we're working on it. Thank you, Paul. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it's pretty much like with uh, trust versus uh, growth of the economy. Like, uh, if you get more digitalization into the um, government services, public sector, it's not like directly linked to getting more openness and transparency because it could be digitalization for digitalization's sake because you, need, you have EU funds that you need to spend for di digitalization, so you do that. And, you know, and, and we you saw other examples. You, you, don't, you don't think about uh, getting more trust or, or getting more efficient or you, you need the EU funds and uh, you need uh, IT companies, procurements and so on. Um, uh, but it, um, the link is there because if we get uh, um, IT services, uh, we digitalize public sector, we uh, get a lot more data about uh, how um, the government interacts with, 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 uh, with people that it serves. And um, uh, in the end, uh, you can uh, make decisions out of this data. You can open this data and create more transparent uh, public sector. Uh, so uh, digitalization is not the key, but it's like a, a thing that needs to be done beforehand if we want to go there. Uh, though uh, as for like digitalizing more, uh, there is a lot that is digitalized now but is still closed for the public or is uh, has been done for not for building trust but for controlling and that is uh, um, something as we heard uh, in the report uh, uh, as seen as opposite as, as an opposite thing like you either trust or you control so uh, a lot of government uh, IT systems, a lot of things that are digitalized, they are uh, uh, dedicated for controlling, for uh, faster and better enforcement of rules, which is also fine. Rule of law is, 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 uh, uh, must be enforced and uh, it's, it's very important for, for things but, uh, uh, and for building trust. But uh, it's not uh, like uh, necessarily the impact figure of, of mm. things. Diana would like to add something about? Um, you know, it's the system uh, creating people, uh, the, the people creating systems, you know, and uh, they should know what they do. And, and first of all, probably um, need assessments and uh, w for what we are creating what you know for whom we are creating what and uh, I, it's it's tool it's instrument but uh, it can help for very very uh, you know for trust society for democratic society and also it can be it can be great for for close society uh, it can help it can help a lot for 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 trust but it also you know it's up to, as always, first of all, still people, still the value of what you have, and the right people in, in, in the right place, then it can help a lot. But otherwise, it sometimes it's, it's, it's worse than, than you have. Mm -hmm. OK, last question here. Thank you for helping me with handing the mic. Thank you. Um, Hello, everybody. My name is Karila Levitskaita, and I represent the NGO called Mental Health Perspectives. And I would like to split my question or like a, into two parts. One, one part is like disparities in the society. Uh, do we trust each other from being from different, uh, let's say, societal perspectives and groups? 
And uh, I know that Paulus mentioned that he is going to discuss social issues and human rights, but I'm impatient, so <laughs> just <Okay. laughs> raise it. Uh, we have really uh, different issues, like uh, our barometer has counted that 68%, I think, uh, do not want to live with anybody in the neighborhood who have, for example, mental issues. Uh, we have uh, some uh, xenophobic, uh, you know, relations with the uh, people from uh, different background, different, you know, social clusters, and, and people who come to Lithuania, right, from some some countries. So this is uh, this is what we really have, and um, I wonder, you know, also comparing the Nordic countries' perspective, how you tackled, I mean, how you perceive that, how, how what do you think? about inclusion and trust, uh, and how could it be built? Because uh, in, in our context, I think uh, we also, I, I have the very similar <laughs> wording, like a social responsibility sometimes, right? When we uh, try to uh, imitate some, 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 some activities like uh, includes, including uh, or, you know, taking together, but we still have very, very clear sense that they are they and we are we. Well, like taking refugees, for example. Yes. Which I we are not yeah. so successful. <laughs> Point out, yeah, yeah but yeah. but it, you, we have a lot of examples, a lot. We have still still thousand people with uh, uh, psychosocial disabilities and uh, living in institutions. I mean, you know, that's a really huge uh, areas of examples. So uh, you know, and and how 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 this you see from perspectives, you know, uh, in dif being in different positions. And another question, it's um, maybe to Diana and to this. Because uh, working in NGO sector, uh, I I'm some I sometimes feel treated as this, you know, const con construction, uh, you know, companies, you, because NGO is not built for being uh, for uh, implementing these procedures of uh, reporting, of documentation, of everything, you know, to, to be provided. And, 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 and uh, among NGO sector people, we often discuss, do we really want EC funds? <laughs> Nothing else really very available. But, you know, uh, this um, having Bureaucracy. the same rules for everybody, mm -hmm. like for NGO sector and for constructive uh, companies, it's something really funny. And, and how you see that from your perspectives. And it's not about, uh, like, a national base. You know, rules. It's about uh, a little bit broader perspectives. EC, you know, and, and European Union and funds, and, and is, is, is restricting more and being controlling more, leading to to transparency. Indeed. Thank you. Okay. So maybe, Mr. Anderson, first about inclusiveness. Uh, yes. Um, the society that you are describing is a society that consists of a lot of we and a lot of them. And that is the opposite of, of what you want if you want to build up trust. So that is a low trust society, basically. And when I describe the challenges of the Nordic countries, that is what some researchers are have a fear that we are moving in that direction. And I'll just give you one example that, that shows you that is very high up on the agenda uh, in all the Nordic countries. Uh, uh, well, especially, especially Sweden, I would say, that has then uh, receiving most migrants. Um, the, 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 the government, well, actually, it's the Social Democrats. It's election year this year in Sweden. Adam pointed out that their main focus, if I understand it correctly, is that uh, Sweden is sort of splitting. Uh, sort of, they are, they, are, they are becoming us and them, and that's the main challenge for that party to, to, to combat that development. So, but they don't, they don't, they don't raise that issue as a trust issue. So, but my analysis is that it sort of trust is behind this. But we, we have different terminology. But sort of that is what we are. If we don't focus on these issues, that creating societies with a lot of us and a lot of them, the, 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 this trust that is on, at stake here. And sort of that, that will have a great impact, negative impact on a society if we don't manage to, 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 to uh, address these issues in a proper way and solve them. Yeah. Okay, Indiana. 
Um, for NGO sector, <laughs> I have read the research about the, about the correlation between trust and the NGO, you know, NGOs administra administrative uh, level, which you, you, if you're implementing a European, European product, how, how much it costs for you and so on. But, um, 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 I found, uh, okay, mm, in, in public, public procurement sphere, um, I found around uh, um, 3,000 public uh, NGOs who become, who, who are the public authorities. And if you're receiving European, European money, European grants from, from structural funds, you must follow all these procedures. And uh, of course, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, 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 it's uh, uh, and very, you know, when you, uh, you, when your project are finished and you, you, you don't receive any more, you still are, <laughs> you know what is minimum. Yeah. And now we are starting to, um, it's actually, I don't know how, how we, you know, in, in, in the society, you know, about all, all this in irregularities when you find in the project, in the, we always creating uh, rules or, or we changing the law, which um, become more control than, not create more than, than to trust. And you know, it's, it's like, it's, you know, it's sign from, from our, our, it's actually, <laughs> Where we are, you know, with all trust in, in, in and I don't know how, how to explain. Sometimes um, now we have um, LRT scandal, you know, and uh, there are exceptions in the law where the audiovisualization programs should be in the, in the directive and in the law should buy without the public procurement law. But now the Minister of Culture preparing the change, change changing uh, the, 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 it should be the same, the same rule, uh, not, not the public procurement law, but the, the same rule as a public procurement. You can imagine it, it can be change by the changing something in management, but not, not the, to changing the law. And the NGO the same. Um, it's, you know, it's like the same, the same situation as uh, in, we, we don't trust each other, we don't trust uh, our NGOs, we don't trust our, our people, I, I agree. Our media, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't like to break the promise of Helen for the reception on the second floor, so uh, let's make the last remarks. And for the last remark, I would just ask you the main question, the thesis, Nordic and Baltic gold. Uh, do you think trust could be also a Baltic gold? Mr. Anderson. Absolutely. Why, why shouldn't it uh, have that chance to become a Baltic gold as well? Uh, just point, I would just like to say that it, it, it's not a quick fix. It takes a long time. Um, if there's one thing that the m modern Nordic history has shown uh, relating to trust, uh, that's the role of the state, I think. To be fair, just, efficient, and transparent. That, I think, is the most important issue here. That's the one I would like to point out. Mm, Paul, do, do you see that we're going the right way towards trust as a gold standard for us? Um, I think uh, we have yet to recognize that, as, as uh, uh, some people do already. But, uh, you know, uh, reflecting on the NGOs part, if we make a subset of rules for NGOs, there will be construction NGOs the next day and um, we will have uh, problems and this is me having trust issues about our society because uh, uh, 
for example, there, there are many examples of us uh, abusing some good ideas, like uh, um, juridical status, um, I don't know, s s small community, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's uh, a, s a small company that you get a lot of tax breaks from. Uh, and it's uh, essentially being used to pay yourself a salary with a much uh, lesser tax amount. Uh, that's, that's its mo most primary <laughs> reason if you uh, check out the, the, the structure of, of their payments. Um, so the, a lot of systems that we create, they are abused and this, is, this comes not from uh, uh, the regulation itself, but from people just seeing the opportunity and using it. And uh, uh, creating this trust, building it, it it's, it's really radically hard. But uh, it, of course, it could be done, and I think we're getting there. So some, sometime in the future, 20, 30 years later, maybe. As we usually talk about comparing ourselves to Nordic countries, sometime in the future, maybe 20, 30 percent. Okay, Diana, your final remarks on um, how could we achieve trust as a Baltic gold? Um, it takes some time. <laughs> uh, Probably I think that it's 40 years, maybe less than 40, 40 years, but um, 20. Um, um, I don't know. I don't know how, how long it stay it takes, but um, let's leave the question open then. Okay. <laughs> we yeah, we, we, we could still, ask. We, we, could, still, we, could, yeah, we, we should. We should fi finish. You know, in an optimistic somehow optimistic. Um, yeah. um, Yeah. Working everything with cases of no. mistrust. Yeah. So. Always on a negative side, as we do also. Uh, okay, okay, so uh, let me conclude this by saying that even the fact that we're discussing that and are projecting ourselves towards Nordic countries, and Nordic countries are actually projecting us as a more Nordic countries, shows that we are some kind of halfway to this. Uh, trust standard, common trust standard that could somehow be used uh, in Nordic and Baltic countries, I think, one day as common. Uh, I want to thank all of you for listening, for asking questions. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that discussion was so short. Uh, as I see that the topic is such a broad, s s the issue is such a broad issue that we could talk for hours and days, and I think we'll talk on a, dec on a decades about this. And now I'd like to ask you to a reception on the second floor, uh, and uh, also applaud for our panelists. So, thank you.